All right. How's everything look there? Good. Okay, cool. Um, so I am going to start by reading uh, the um, our land acknowledgement for MSU Denver, um, and then we'll go into introductions and a couple of questions, and then hopefully some time for questions from you all. All right. Um, as an organization, can everybody hear me? Uh, okay. As an organization within MSU Denver and the Department of Art, CBA acknowledges the indigenous people of the land of Auraria and the broader Denver area. We honor and acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories and ancestral hometown, homelands of the Cheyenne and Arapaho nations. We acknowledge that the land and history of this space we are fortunate to gather in today. This, is, this area was also used as the site of trade, hunting, gathering, and healing for many other native nations, the Lakota, Ute, Kiowa, Comanche, Apache, Shoshone, and others. 48 tribes have called this land home. We recognize the indigenous peoples as the original stewards of the land, water, plants, and animals who call this place home. Let us also acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory. We recognize that U.S. public policy has been used to displace indigenous communities, erode tribal nation sovereignty, and forcibly assimilate native individuals into U.S. society. We respect the many diverse indigenous peoples still connected to this land on which we gather. We pay our respect to them and give them thanks to all the tribal nations and the ancestors of this place. We also acknowledge the labor of enslaved Africans and their descendants who worked this stolen land for the colonists who continue to disproportionately face economic oppression, racism, violence, and exploitation. Lastly, we wanna recognize the communities and families of Auraria displaced by the creation of this campus for MSU Denver to have a place that we now call home. We share this acknowledgement to encourage all of us here on the Auraria campus to consider how our work in this space and our daily lives can address these historic and contemporary atrocities perpetuated against native people and other marginalized communities. Right, so thanks everybody for coming here. Um, so this is the first section of art and work. Um, and today we're talking to four fantastic art therapists. Um, and we're just gonna start by letting them introduce themselves. And um, and then we've got a couple questions from there and then some questions from you. I think we'll have time. All right, so Nancy, can we start with you? Sure, just to introduce myself. Yeah, okay. I'm So I'm Nancy Wolf. And I work in private practice now. I was at the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment for 28 years, and I just retired this year from that and transitioned to private practice. That's a big transition for me. Um, but I'm used to working in lots of different environments, and now it's just on screen, so it's a pretty big difference. <laughs> yeah. So. Hi, I'm Chelsea Sager. Um, I just graduated and entered the field. I started my career um, this July. Um, I work at Denver Children's Home, which is a residential treatment facility for kiddos who are struggling with trauma and other mental health issues um, and for whatever reason can't be living at home at the moment. And I do group work and individual work in case management. Um, I got into art therapy as um, I went, my, my undergrad was in art education and I started working for a museum and was doing outreach stuff with people with Alzheimer's and people in jail and realized how influential art is to express ourselves and then kind of followed the psychology path into art therapy. Yeah. Yeah. And Chelsea, I'm, I'm going to just say <laughs> you, you just mentioned to me that you discovered art therapy yeah. at a at a talk. I did. I oh, attended a talk cool. and as an undergraduate and an art therapist was speaking. And, and there you are. Yeah, here I am. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm Catherine Reed. I'm also an art therapist. I went to school at the Art Institute of Chicago um, for my graduate school. And I went to undergrad in Boulder at University of Colorado. Got a Bachelor of Fine Arts there. And now work at Children's Hospital and I am the manager of our creative arts therapy program there, which I am proud to say, I think, is the largest, most integrated creative arts therapy program in the country mm -hmm. at a children's hospital. So um, not because of me, but because of just some really fantastic support in the community and just being able to find the best of the best. So it's a pretty great job. Um. My name is Hilary Sin, and I am a dance therapist. So my art is movement 
And the therapeutic form that I work with is movement in the body with children and teenagers at Children's Hospital, uh, specifically struggling with a host of psychiatric diagnoses. Um, and then I'm also part of a research team that Catherine is also a part of. Catherine is my boss at Children's Hospital. Um, it's called the Colorado Resiliency Arts Lab, and we've been studying how the creative arts therapies can help support healthcare workers um, and their mental distress and burnout that they've been experiencing way before the pandemic, and then, of course, even more so since the pandemic. So that's another aspect to my job currently. All right, so the, the two big areas that I, I think we want to know about um, are sort of what the job really entails, you know, what you do on a daily basis, um, and then also how you got there or how one would or why one would do what you do. Um, so let's just start um, with um, what you actually do. I think you all actually do kind of quite varied things. Mm -hmm. It's really wonderful. Yeah, so um, I'm going to start with you because um, on our recording, you're easy to start with. So. Okay. <laughs> I'm not picking on you. That's fine. That's fine. So what I what I'm doing day to day uh, right now is like um, meeting people, like doing telehealth, right? And which is a huge challenge given uh, to to try to do our therapy under those circumstances. Because I'm not sitting in a studio, going like, oh, we're gonna do this, uh, or you're talking about this. Let's let's do this exercise. So. Um, it takes a little more planning to uh, to get those art materials either to them or make sure that they have access to them before we do that. Um, I'm used to, when I was working at the health department, I was um, very mobile, like I'd have to go to a jail or somebody's home or their workplace or just being in my car and meet them in a parking lot or a park. And um, so I didn't have access to a studio, so I did a lot of small project kind of things um, or small like um, like I had a mandala journal that I created so with a like if you took like any it's like about this size just like this so the circles were um, for mandalas was really like not too intimidating to like oh my god that's too much white space for me um, and uh, so just having um, grounding exercises and then using um, oil pastels, which were on purpose to be able to, to layer and be able to scratch through um, and blend. Um, so the choices of the materials and the and the project, um, and sometimes it was just a process, it was more process oriented versus like a product. Um, uh, it really just depended on what was going on with with the individual. And what I need to be ready for really at any time is like um, really kind of what I'm really hearing for is like the the metaphors and other things that people are talking about as they're talking to me have a lot of imagery um, and that can be just helpful even if they don't want to do art therapy physically to even use those, those um, images to consider like how does how does this transform to that? Even so, using their imagination to consider how how something shifts. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like um, physically doing the art sometimes. Um, and I feel like I'm going off on a tangent now. <laughs> well, I think it's great because I think a description of, of what actually happens is is part yeah, of what we want to know. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of uh, you know, one thing I was going to say about art therapy in general, or even therapy in general, is it's like there's so much to learn, and I'm constantly learning because there's all these different techniques and things like that, not just in therapy, but also just different things you're doing with the art materials or the process. And there's so much research, you know, that's always coming out and how we're learning about it. So it's just a constant. I mean, for me, it's like very nourishing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just like a sponge. I just want it. I want it all, you know? Um, and sometimes it's a little like too much. You're like, oh my gosh, I, I just want to do it all. There's not enough time in the day to, to get it all in. But that's where I, that's how I know I'm in the right place because I'm like, this is, this is what I'm built for. Um, 
but it it kind of keeps you ready for any situation because you just don't know like the next person that you're interacting with or like what they're going to bring up. You kind of have to be ready for for whatever that is. And um, like at the health department, I didn't have any choice over who I was going to be working with. They were um, a lot of people were like living with HIV and were at high risk of uh, acquiring HIV and and STIs and so so a lot of different um, and other addictions and other barriers and various things in life. But um, I just never knew what the mix with that individual was going to be. So I just had to um, be working on my own little my own little toolbox over here and also taking really good care of myself so that I'd have access to those tools and be really present for that client when I'd see them. So that's that's a pretty good summary, I think. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you repeat the question too? Yeah, um, I think just, um, I mean, I have some sense of what our therapy is, okay. but I don't know what you do all day. Yeah, you know, so great. just kind of what you, okay. what the job actually entails. Okay, yeah. um, and I think I heard you say something about like what, I know, for me, when I was getting advice and going into the field, everyone kept telling me, like, you need to know what you want to do. Like, as you're learning, like, what is it you want? You know, and I've, I've always worked with kids, so I knew I wanted to work with kids. And I have had access to studios. So for me, I wanted a space to, like, enter, work, and leave. So a little different than your experience. Um, so I knew that's what I wanted. And I was lucky enough to intern with these two. And so I had the experience of a studio space. And so finding a job, I wanted that as well again. Um, and I think I like that because of the flexibility of being able to use materials kind of organically as the client brings things up. Um, in art therapy, it's talked a lot about like certain materials eliciting certain emotions and containing certain emotions. So if you want someone who's really intellectualizing and really like wanting to talk about a problem, I might be like, oh, actually, maybe we should do some watercolor and like get a little loose and like let some of your emotions out. Um, so kind of thinking about a client in that way and how what materials might be beneficial for what's going on, which is what you talked about. Um, so a, a day in my job right now is I'm also a primary therapist to several clients who I do family therapy with, milieu therapy, so like help them with behavior management skills. And then also during our individual therapy sessions, I might bring in art if they're open to it or challenge them in a nice way to try something new and like step outside of their comfort zone. Um, I also have individual clients who have their primary therapist and then I'm their art therapist. So we work a lot in metaphor. Um, I'm making a manga right now with an individual like who really wants to um, like solidify their identity and is kind of like exploring, you know, different things like for their path. And so all the characters kind of relate to a part of who they are. Um, and then I lead groups as well. So the kiddos live in a dorm and I do art with the whole dorm group and we talk about dorm issues. We talk about um, mindfulness, we talk about breathing, we talk about communication, and we make art. Sometimes that's open-ended and people can just express themselves and have an hour to create. And sometimes I'm asking them to do something along the lines of like um, figuring out what senses they like and they don't like, or what's going on inside of you and what's something you show other people. And like, how can you create that and say that but you don't necessarily have to say it aloud, which is what I love about art. It's another whole language. And even if only the client knows what they're talking about, I'm doing my job. And that's like really all I'm there for. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. What do, what do your days look like? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's I, I just I love being on panels where everyone has such different experiences. So thank you. Um, what do my what do my days look like? Because um, well, you're also managing other. People, I, I, I am. Think. That's, and that's yeah. what I do mostly. Um, I think the most exciting thing that happened today, we have a new medical dog in our psychiatric department. And I it's pretty exciting to be with a dog at work. Um, I, I'd say a lot of my work 
currently is really about imagining new ways to um, think about healing and trying to translate that to people who work in hospitals. So the people that I work with are, you know, we're in a, a Western medical hospital. So we're either in the psych department, which is very particularly focused on psychiatry and psychopathology, meaning like what makes people sick? What makes people suicidal? How do people, how do kids recover? And so there's a very strong focus on diagnoses and behaviors and how to manage behaviors. Um, and then in the medical units, it's very much about solving the mystery of the medical um, issue. And I think what drives me is, is helping people in those sciency kind of orientations think differently about how to um, heal themselves, how to heal patients, and also how to heal and shift culture. So um, a lot of my work that I've been drawn toward um, has been um, cultural change. That's kind of why I got into art therapy at the beginning, actually. Um, I was an art teacher for my first, gosh, eight years of adulthood. <laughs> um, I was an art teacher in public schools and it was hard. I loved the kids and I loved the art, but I did not love the school systems. And just like the drive of having six classes a day with 36 kids a day and producing artwork and grading their artwork, it didn't, it didn't match with what um, I wanted to be doing. I wanted to know the kids better and I wanted to see what they really wanted to make, not what could go on the wall. So um, finding art therapy for me was a real gift um, and happened only after I spent some time out of the country and in West Africa in the Peace Corps and really watched and experienced how art could bring people together in a village and also how it could shift the way they think or behave about certain things. So my focus in the Peace Corps was um, HIV AIDS education mm -hmm. and a lot of the people in the village where I lived didn't read. So we used theater and we used acting and we used comedy to, to talk about condoms and something that they never ever talked about, right? And, and the comedy and the theater made it okay somehow. And watching that and really thinking the art, it, arts in general are so powerful and they can shift an entire village's orientation about the way they think and the way they behave. So I came home and I'm like, I really wanna find a job where I can do that and be part of social change. Um, and that's how I found art therapy. So I'm still trying to do that. I, I work with our diversity, health, equity, and inclusion team at Children's um, using the arts to try to help people think differently about, you know, the way we're serving kids in, in Aurora when we are a mostly white female hospital. Um, and that's been really important work for me and also I think for the hospital to see again how the arts can help us think differently and see differently and solve problems differently. So I know that was very theoretical and not not specific, but that's why I think these answers are interesting, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like we're in a big picture. Yeah. Um, it is fun to get to sit next to you different than our roles we get to, we're kind of getting to bust out of our regular yeah. workday roles and that's really satisfying and dance movement therapy we're generally in a circle and people are often like de-rolling in certain ways and putting on other roles in new ways and getting to have a different experience of themselves um and that's something that's really fun for me about the work that i do but then also for experiences like this like being in a different space and are you all visual artists in this room right now for the most part or do we have different kinds of visual art we, are there dancers are there in the dancers, crowd comedians i don't know comedians we do all come together around visual art but i'm sure that we all have all kinds of know, things theater and different yeah other things that we do too yeah. also i think some people are here from psych oh so cool social work awesome i think at least we had some rsvps okay that's yeah. great mm -hmm. um 
I was just curious who was who was out there. Yeah. Um, Visual art, though, it's okay. dominant. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, and that, you know, to me, since everything starts and ends with the body, I mean, the making of art is obviously very somatic. And whether you're doing small scale or large scale, you're having some sort of physical experience, too, in addition to that that visual piece. Um, so to me, everything is is a is a bit of a dance. Um, I think part of your question it originally included something about path, like how we might have come to be. That's the next part. Is that the next part? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Although you know you can weave it together if you want. Okay. I'm always interested. <laughs> but I'll ask the guest. So, okay. <laughs> um, so I'll start then with uh, my daily work, and I'll just tell you about my day today, this very day, because every day is a little bit different. Um, today I was working with um, a group of children like elementary age six about six to or more like seven to 11 years of age kiddos who come to the hospital to have like a two week long mental health curriculum that's in our partial hospitalization program and i was with uh three young children today in their classroom and uh, i use a lot of props in my work um it helps first elicit uh, maybe different ways of moving and interacting with each other, depending on what kind of props I'm using. Um, also, it can help create safety, because if you can imagine you walk into a room and the furniture is all up to the side, and it's just an open space that can really create some anxiety for people. So if you give them something to hold on to, that can help sort of ground them and anchor them and feel a little more comfortable. Um, so today, the props that I had with me, I have these ribbon wands and they have a glitter stick and then ribbons that come off of it. And um, I had this little girl who was incredibly anxious and uh, trembling with anxiety. And uh, once she had the ribbon one in her hand, she sort of loosened up a little bit. She had something else to focus on that was outside of herself. And when I gave the, the invitation for all of us to stand with our ribbon wands and share some sort of a movement with the rest of the group, um, she took her ribbon wand and she started wrapping it around her arm. And so we're all following her, doing it with her. And then she released it from her arm and she started talking about how this was an emotion and she was letting go of it. And I didn't do that. She did that. Um, you know, we just create the opportunity for, for these things to arise. And you all know as artists that sometimes you start to engage with something and things happen and emerge that you could have never planned for. And that's also part of the therapeutic piece of, of what we do. We get to let ourselves be surprised by what emerges. And so she did this. This, this little girl who was really scared and trembling is now engaged in this expressive process of talking about her emotion and letting it go. So then I just follow that. And then the next kiddo is like, Next kid wanted to release anger. So we had this whole beautiful, and I'm so grateful I had this group today so I can talk with you <laughs> about it now because it doesn't always go like that. I just want to be very clear. It doesn't always go this way. Um, but we got to have this very organic experience of um, recognizing the connection between emotion and our bodies and then using some sort of creative act to connect all of us and break through some of that isolation. So um, that's an example of a group I had today. Um, and other times I'm doing lots of uh, writing, whether that's notes that I don't wanna do, um, <laughs> <laughs> or having meetings about various different programs. So there's a whole other administrative aspect too, um, but that's what the clinical work uh, tends to look like. I think it's good to acknowledge all that other part yeah. though, right? Yeah, because totally. as artists, we have this idea that we're going to do this amazing job, yeah. but there's always parts that you're like, no. Exactly. <laughs> all that other stuff. So, yeah. Great. Cool. All right. We're going to jump in over to you. Okay. Um, and now we'll talk about sort of your background, your schooling, but also just the events that brought you to want to do this kind of work mm -hmm. and make you good at it. And just sort of someone coming to it, what would, who would be a good candidate for it? What kinds of experiences would benefit them if they yeah. want to go into this? Um, well, I got my BA in psychology and then I went to the uh, pretty soon after that I went to the state health department and I was doing um, what they call, well, now everybody kind of seems to know what contact tracing is for STIs and HIV. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that for uh, about five years before I was like, 
I need to do something else. I mean, I felt like I was going in and I was asking so many questions of people and opening Pandora's box and they were like, oh, I never talked about this before. And then I'd be like, OK, well, thanks, bye. <laughs> um, I just I, I didn't feel right about it. And after a while, I was like, I, knew, I want some tools. And plus, I wanted to I wanted to get into it or like, you know, I, know, I want to know more. And how do I really support this person? And um, so that I went to Europa University. But honestly, I was just talking about like how it happened. It really like literally art therapy came to my door where I was moving out of my apartment and the woman who came to look at it, she um, she was an art therapist and worked at Naropa in admissions. And we were just talking, and you know, um, so just total happenstance that she arrived at my door. And the more she told me about art therapy, and it, it was really just totally in passing because I was like, oh, we were just gonna hang out and we were just gonna do this. And then, you know, she kept saying, you know, you're you're a really good candidate for this. And I'm like, really? Are you sure? And, you know, because I've been doing yoga a long time. I would talk about chakras and things like that. And, um, but especially Naropa, right? And especially <laughs> Naropa, right? Work, yeah. But I mean, well, Naropa is what's special really about Naropa is that it's a contemplative education, which means that there it's grounded in um, in mindfulness, which is really rare to find. Um, so I, I, uh, and honestly, with the art therapy part, I had to take some extra classes to get into it. And even the classes that I took, um, just like painting classes and stuff, I'd never really taken an official painting class before. Mm -hmm. And um, but I was artistic. I just hadn't done a class and so when I was doing it, I was like wow I can't believe I didn't get an, a degree in this why you can get a degree in this you know <laughs> I was just having so much fun and um but I realized too you know looking back like it just wasn't really supported in my family you know my mom was actually really talented in art but she wasn't supported either like she had been accepted into the chicago art institute and didn't go because they couldn't afford it and it was a long time ago mm -hmm. but um she had won awards and things for her art and um she was a very creative person and and she told me years later she's like yeah i'm really sorry i discouraged you you said you wanted to be an artist when you were like five and i was like i did i said that and, um so really when the art therapy program came to my door i realized you know like i'm going to do this for myself i don't know if i'm going to be an art therapist or not but I I felt it felt like really nourishing and important to do for myself and um and so you know it's just a blessing that I that I got so much out of it for myself and is something that I can offer the world so that answer the question I think, I think so yeah yeah absolutely and so for those of you who don't know Europe is in Boulder right so it's it's quite local. right right and so they have um they have a lot of different kinds of uh, degrees with the um, it's the the transpersonal counseling psychology department and they have and one of the tracks is with art therapy so it's a three-year program and they have a wilderness therapy too and um, I think one other. somatic somatic mm -hmm. yes yeah it's a great program awesome great thanks yeah uh, Great segue. I also went to Naropa, as, right. we, as we talked about. Um, like I said, I graduated just this past May and I completed my like the last year of our track is an internship, which I also completed at um, Denver uh, Children's Hospital, um, Children's Hospital Colorado. Sorry, so yeah, yeah. They might <laughs> the places are yeah. similar titles. Um, but before that, um, I struggled with dyslexia as a kid growing up and I found a lot of like solace and like comfort in art. And so I always sought out art for me. And then as I grew older, like then I went to school for art. I, my undergrad's in art education. I was a teacher, but I didn't like mainstream. Where did you go for that? Oh yeah, Pittstown University in Pennsylvania. Um, and I didn't 
like the idea of being in public education. So I started working at the Aspen Art Museum here in Colorado, which is a free museum if you're ever there. And I was an educator for them. So I'd go into schools and I'd see kids at the museum and give tours and slowly started doing their outreach programming, working with moms and newborns, working with Alzheimer's folks, going into the jail system. Um, I also worked at a, a community art center and would, was working with kiddos overcoming addictions. And we would do like a three hour journaling workshop where we had all these collage materials out and it was just like a buffet. It was just these gorgeous materials and these kids coming in and you would just kind of hang out with them all day. But I remember the one thing that all of their people said was like, you're not allowed to ask them about their treatment. You're not allowed to say anything to them about like, like you know, we know you wouldn't know where they are, but like you can't ask anything. And that was so hard because a lot of the kids would just bring it up and it was just there and I would have to be like, oh, well, let's just talk about your art. Mm -hmm. And I would have to bring it back to the art. And I had a similar experience going into the jail as well. I wasn't allowed to ask about their case. I wasn't allowed to like encourage that kind of conversation, which was just naturally happening. And that was what really led me to wanting to be an art therapist because I was like, this is already happening. If I'm going to continue to do this kind of work, I need to be more prepared. I want to be able to help people express the way they want to and, and understand what they're really talking about. I think a lot of stuff comes up in art that because we're trained, we're able to like help someone really understand. And I love the idea that art is a reflection of who we are and it's a mirror holding things up to us, whether we want to hear it or see it or not. <laughs> um, and um, another concept that got me interested in art and when I was talking to art therapists about going into the field, someone said, you know, like, well, where do images really come from? They all come from somewhere and they come from within us. So like, what are those images saying? And what are they asking you? So um, through that, I ended up at Naropa and um, it's definitely, I'm learning a lot being new in the field. Um, and I can tell you that almost everybody I graduated with, I graduated with 16 people. Anyone who has applied for an art therapy or therapy job has been hired. So that made me feel really good. And I hope that inspires some of you. Um, I also wanted to say like, if you're interested in this, like go for it and seek out um, shadowing or like seek out these moments where you can be with the community making art. How can you meet new people making art and kind of like dip your toe in a little bit to like what that feels like for you? Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. And interesting coming from education into that. Yeah. So great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's an interesting transition moving from being a teacher to a therapist. It is. Because it is so different, right? Mm -hmm. And yet there are so much there's so much crossover. Yeah. Um, because if you love being with kids, yeah. yeah I, I think what's happening for me is I'm finding that I really also love doing therapy with adults or or talking about art and making art and culture change with adults has been really gratifying for me. Um how are they different? Sorry, I'm just jumping off the bus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and yet not. I mean, yeah. adults tend to be more, um, there are more obstacles to get to what's real and what's in there, right? With kids, like they show it, they, they're right there. They show you, so there's a beauty in that. Yeah. Um, I find a lot of the work I do with adults is healing the messages they received as children. Mm -hmm. Right, that you're not an artist or you're not good enough or your sky is not supposed to be purple or green. It's supposed to be blue. So just all these kind of um, artificial limitations that art, art education, I think, in this country is put on kids. So it'd be really interesting. I'm excited to start hearing from you um, what your experience has been like because you're all in art school, right? High school and, and MSU. Yeah, yeah. And I, mean, some, I think some people are social work. And Psych. Very cool. Yeah. So I'm excited for this to get yeah. interactive. Um, so my trajectory, I already talked about it a little bit. My, when I was 11, my brother told me he was gay and he was 10 years older than me. And uh, for my high school graduation, he brought me out to New York City and introduced me to his world. And I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, so it was pretty different. Um, and it just like took my brain and exploded it 
in this really big, beautiful way. Um, I had like 80 new big brothers and um, went to a lot of parties. And it was 1985 and it was, you know, very kind of out and big in the streets. And then about, gosh, I think it was a year later, um, he told us he was HIV positive and it turned out about 80 of his friends. 80% of his friends died. So most of those big brothers that I met died. And it was very, um, it was just big. That was 1985. It was a, a huge cultural shift for me as a young adult coming into adulthood and making sense of why my brother was dying. And how old were you? I, I was 20 when he died. So, and I was in school in Boulder and I was in art school. I was in a photography class and I couldn't like, everything I was taking pictures of just didn't feel like I was taking pictures of squirrels on, <laughs> on high wires. And I just, and I took pictures of my sister's wedding. Nothing really landed until I started working with HIV AIDS and talking about my brother and making art about that experience for me and how hard it was to watch him struggle and suffer and then die. And so for me, <laughs> art it was making that art that healed me right and then that healing became a vehicle for me to kind of i, I followed it for years i thought that i was going to be an hiv aids educator for life i thought you know i was going to try to change the the sex education system in the in united states and put a condom machine in every high school well that didn't happen and when i realized that wasn't going to happen i changed direction but I think um, the reason I tell that part of the story versus like the the specifics of the education is that I I felt the change in me and knew how I mean it saved my life like I mm -hmm. it it cured me of depression right being able to make the art that processed my grief and pain and to be able to do that for people who are also struggling and to offer them the same vehicle that saved me is, is, a, is a true gift um, to me that I'm able to share. So um, for me, it's a calling. And, it, and I didn't find art therapy until I was in my 30s. So, you know, a lot of struggle and a lot of kind of confusion about like, who am I as an artist and why do I like making art and why is that important? And so for me to find ways to um, connect with other human beings. That's really what it was about for me. And I think anyone who has struggled and suffered and, 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 and felt the feeling of art being a vehicle for healing could be a great art therapist. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting path too. I mean, we sit here in a gallery and I think in art school, we imagine we'll show galleries, right? But there's lots of uses for it, right? There's oh, lots yeah. of different ways to channel that. And, and I would say 80% of art made in art therapy never goes onto walls, maybe 90, right? 99. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I was surprised how much I could get excited about a little thing that was like just, you know, some blobs of color, that, you know, if it meant something in the, to the client and it was like, you could, you could, you knew it was a real shift for them. It was real, it was meaningful expression for them. Like, yep. oh my God, that's... Mm -hmm. It means everything. Yes. Yeah. Um, I am really uncomfortable and insecure about making visual art. So that's not my comfort zone. Uh, movement is mine and that's why I do what I do. Um, so I think that's another really an important piece of all of this is why, why and how did that ever become separate from just us living our lives, whether mm -hmm. that's the visual art making or moving and dancing um, and how all these things have been sort of chopped up and separated. And there was a time when this land belonged to other people. And um, you mentioned healing in the land acknowledgement. And that really struck me because um, dancing and making music and making art were all just part of daily life and weren't even called art, right? Like <laughs> It was life. And um, bringing those things back together is part of what drives um, me. And I transitioned from performance to therapy, so different 
than uh, education to therapy, it was performance to therapy. And that's a really interesting um, shift to make as well. But my first career was that of, of an actor. And I did that for a while, and then I, I didn't do that for a long while. Um, so I don't know if there are any aspiring performers out there, but go for it, and it's it's tough. <laughs> um, I found in my training as um, a dancer and an actor that there were all of these physical practices that would elicit emotions that would uh, help me feel more relaxed or more calm or one day in an Alexander Technique class, this was in my undergrad, I went to Sarah Lawrence College, which is out in New York. Um, the instructor was working with me on opening up some tightness that I had in my chest and I started, I just started crying and there was all of this emotional content there. I don't even know what it was about, but suddenly there was this connection. I was 19 at the time. I'm like, okay, this is fascinating. I'm having this emotional experience based on something that happened in my body. Um, so I think that is initially when the seed was planted, that there's there's something to um, movement and this body that I live in. It's not just a, a functional machine, but it's a it's a place where I live and also a mode of expression. So that would have been when the seed was planted. But then I did all kinds of other things and I did a bunch of weird theater and a bunch of avant garde stuff. And then I got involved in politics for a little while and doing some activist things because I was like, I'm going to help change the world. and. Um, that's really hard to do. Changing the world is hard. Um, you, we should all still try, but it's hard. <laughs> there are lots of different ways you can do it. I've tried a few of them, and this is my current way of <laughs> doing it. Um, and baseline uh, comes back to, for me, dancing feels so good. It feels good to do it by myself, and it feels even better to do it with other people. There's this nonverbal connection that happens. And, you know, in our job at the hospital, I've learned ways that I um, studied at Naropa, the somatic program there, to, you know, connect clinical language to what I'm doing in my dance movement groups. And that's all important to be able to translate it for other professionals and to make sense of it. And it all comes back to, it just feels good. And that's important and that's okay. <laughs> and we need to not lose lose sight of that. Um, especially with, with these kids that we have and so many teenagers struggling with uh, depression and anxiety to the point where they just don't even want to be on this planet anymore. Um, so we find ways to uh, connect and even have a moment of maybe being like, oh, I, I'm alive and I want to be here at, at least at least for now and you know, get through the next until the next day. Um, so now that I hear myself saying all this, I'm I, I do love my work and it's really tough. <laughs> it's really hard um, just because of working in a hospital setting. So dance movement therapy and all and art therapy, I think you're hearing it from these three too. It's going to look different depending on where you are um, and who you are and who you are. Um, so yeah, my path was just really kind of stumbling along, um, acting into politics. And then one day I was like, oh my gosh, there's this thing called dance therapy. Um, and it took me all the way back to myself as a child mm -hmm. and remembering um, that I wanted to be a dancer and that we all have sort of this birthright to move and dance. Um, and it doesn't just have to be people that know how to do it. The term somatic, mm. I think I think it's a beautiful word, but I also think it's a little bit confusing. Can you just kind of define it? I'm so glad yes. you asked me. Yeah. Soma uh, means body. So somatic is really having to do with the body. So somatic work is body work. Yeah. So it's another one of those words that I paid a lot of money for, but we're just really <laughs> talking about our bodies. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love the idea. I love the idea because there are 16 of us at Children's Hospital, 16 creative arts therapists. So that's art therapy, music therapy, dance movement therapy, drama therapy, and yoga therapy. And literally it's 16 different ways of doing it. That's a great point. That every individual does it differently. Every single one of us, and I, there's so much coolness in that to me. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's not the kind of profession you go into, and there's a there's a prescribed way to do it. 
you go in and you get to be like the best version of yourself. Yeah, I love that. Also, though, just because for um, practical senses, you would probably have an undergrad in. Oh, yeah. Uh, psychology, art, mm -hmm. teaching. Yeah, I had to take psych psychology classes um, from a local college to get the credits I needed to apply to graduate school. Okay. And then you would do a grad program. Yes. Yep, correct. And you would get licensed as a therapist. You would then work on your licensure after graduation, okay. which is what I'm also doing. Um, so it. you'll you'll have the credentials to apply for licensure. Now I have a, my provisional license, which um, hopefully I'll be licensed in the next two years, but I'm getting all of my requirements met through my job. Okay. And there's a lot of detail in there. Mm -hmm. Licensure is helpful if you want to bill insurance. It's helpful for legitimization. If you're a music therapist, you don't need licensure. So there's a, just a lot of details. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's that if anybody wants to know, please ask. We can tell you. But I feel like yeah. it's almost too much to get into. Mm -hmm. It was better to not know that when I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I think that's funny. You can work about it. You'll get it. You can kind of count on an undergrad and an undergrad. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then do you need to um, work for somebody else? Can I just or, jump in real yeah, quick yeah, on that undergrad to grad? Um, I can say for the American Dance Therapy Association, they do offer um, alternate route possibilities. So if you haven't gone through the undergrad to graduate oh, cool. pipeline, which is pretty standard mm -hmm. and for various reasons, um, there are opportunities to become a dance therapist through some alternate route, and then you work that out with the ADTA. Okay. And music the therapy is also different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People hire bachelor level music therapists all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Okay. It's just a Great. different profession. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know that there, I mean, there are those requirements and then yeah. everybody does it their own way, yeah. even though the schooling yeah. is the structure. Yeah. yeah. So if you have a yeah. specific question about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that now it. we can open it up to questions. Do people have questions? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I've actually I discovered art therapy when I was in high school. I dedicated a lot of time in Metro here to combining art therapy and art, art psychology, human services, and social work to create my degree all in preparation to go to Rome. Yay! So I'm like, <laughs> to go there. But now I'm in this middle period between my undergrad and my graduate school, and I'm a little, I'm just like, I feel this nervous tension of like, what do I do to prepare myself? to get into these places. I feel a lot of weight on making sure that I'm prepared, like emotionally, mm -hmm. to handle the things that are going to come ahead. So I have two questions. One of them is any recommendations on like ways that I can kind of dip my toes in the field. I know you mentioned like practicing art with other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the second one is um, how do you guys take care of yourselves? Like when you do have these really heavy things, I know that sometimes really poor things on, you know, and you have to make sure that you're covered to the world. But I'm curious on your individual ways to do that. Great questions. Mm -hmm. As the only person up here who didn't go to Naropa, <laughs> it is a three year program and it's expensive. It's expensive. So as long as you're prepared for that, um, I just think that's important to say. Yeah, it's a price. Yeah. Uh, that's why I didn't go there. Yeah. Did you say in Colorado though? Because as far as I know, Europe is the only school in Colorado that's for therapy association. Like, sorry. Yeah. So it is. I say about yeah. That. Yeah. It's a real interesting conversation. Um, no, I went. I I got my grad program in uh, at the Art Institute of Chicago. Okay. I think Leslie offers an art program online. Yeah. Too. Leslie okay. University. Leslie, yeah. yeah. So something to look into. Yeah. Um, Naropa prepared me emotionally for handling what my clients brought to the table, mm -hmm. and it was an emotional program. It was like mm -hmm. three years of therapy for myself, yeah. doing art therapy on myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was nervous going into the field. Like, did this, did this program prepare me? And I would confidently say it did. Um, and and kind of um, what Hillary was saying is like it is a it's a hard job. You don't know what someone's going to tell you and how you're going to handle that. I seek supervision. I talk to people who are like more experienced than myself. I 
have my own art practice. I try to at least, and um, I try to have fun outside of work. I get in the nature. I do the things that really fill my cup up. And even on the days I don't want to, I try to remind myself like this is going to be good for me. Um, yeah. And as far as like getting into the community to do art, um, I'm like newer to the Denver area. I've been here for five years, but I would look into like at community art studios around here, um, seeing about like even getting some friends together for like an art night every once in a while. Just like the more you kind of cultivate it, or um, I just joined a, a guild of weavers because I'm like trying to get into weaving. So I like joined a weaving community group. So just if you're into something, like start Googling it. Is there a group out there? Because um, there probably is, you know? Um, so I, if I think of anything else, I'll let you know. There's also the, the Art Therapy Association yes. of Colorado. Yes. Which they have an, a website, really great contacts. You can write them get connected. I also was told to see an art therapist. I saw my own art yeah. therapist before deciding to go to school. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also, if you want sort of volunteer opportunities to make art, especially with children, I can pick you up. Nice. <laughs> but I think the self-care question is also really important. So I'm glad you answered that. Chelsea, I really believe that all of those things are key. And the act of making art yourself, I think, is part of the, it's one of the most important pieces of the resilience that keeps you going. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? I would, totally. I was, you know, regardless of what people say about your art or whether you're marketable or not, just do it for yourself. Um, one of the things though too that, uh, that really complements my own art is, is meditation. Um, like before I went to Naropa, I, just happened to see this flyer about insight meditation and um, it's Vipassana and uh, it just happened to be also the kind of uh, meditation that Naropa did so I just it turned out well for me but um, that is such a huge important foundation for me I can't say enough about that. I mean, it's to just, they call it a practice for a reason because you never really get there. You're just, it is something that you just, you, you do for yourself all the time, you know, and it's in the moment and it's, um, you know, using that, that sense of focus is so uh, applicable one to the moment, but to so many other things that we do in our lives that I use it every day, even if I'm not meditating in that moment, um, you know, at, a, at my altar or something, it's something that, that I carry with me. Um, just like I was saying about the imagery, you know, I was just using the, the metaphor of uh, meditation with a client the other day. Um, I guess he's super depressed. He, he's like given himself a certain amount of time before it's like, he would kill himself and no pressure. Um, but uh, just kind of he hearing the way he talks about even like his, um, the way he does computer programming and and how he um, uh, just trying to kind of relate everything, you know, relate imagery and those metaphors and analogies and things to the things that are relevant to to people. He was like, wow, that's a really good analogy. So he just like his mind is turning. So it's really like it's feeling it's like he's feeling heard. You know, he's feeling really heard, really seen and ways that we can, you know, start to communicate. Um, and I really don't think I would have done that as well had I not uh, had this important tool. I would just say self-care, self-care, you know, just keep, get really good at it. <laughs> you know, it's a practice, obviously, but regardless of whatever that stuff is that you do, because it's my meditation, it's my exercise, it's how I eat, how I, you know, make sure I have social life, you know, art, everything is, it's just, it's all important. Walking. 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 It's like the cheapest and most accessible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
self-care thing you can possibly do walking outside. It's a big one um, for me. It can be very regulating for your nervous system. Mm -hmm. In parks, especially. Yeah, parks, especially. Looking in at things, city. looking at things far away. Trees. Green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> it's good Give for them everyone. oxygen. Yeah. I think we can squeeze in one more question. Yes. Uh, yeah. You. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what I want to know is, does this university offer any kind of continuity for someone who's already on the track? Ah. Because it's just an addictions counseling. But I've always had an interest in art, somatic, you know, visual mm -hmm. arts, anything. Is there anything aside from a degree program? At MSU? Yep. Well, I don't think at MSU, but at at Naropa, at Naropa, like a side, uh, like track vacation. Unfortunately, not that I know of. It's it, it's a tricky question. It is a tricky question because you're becoming a mental health practitioner. That's really really important. So to have a certification in in one of these modalities is. It's tricky because we are spending like two or three years in these master's programs. And so generally, I think the certificates are not as. Um, what's the word I need? Robust, I don't know. robust oh. or. So I would not hire someone with a certificate, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And at the same time, I would never want to say, don't do art, right. don't do right. this, don't. Right. It's not that I wouldn't want you to do the work. It's that it's it's a tricky conversation. Yeah. Because it's also kind of about profession um, protection, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I can say that regarding um, body work, somatic work, there are actually all kinds of different trainings out there and certificates that do exist for yes. like really specific ways of working with the body. Yes. So if if that is of interest to you, and maybe you've already looked into these things, but there's somatic experiencing if you've looked into that. Yeah. Um, so that could be a possible path. Um, gosh, there's actually all kinds of things. EMDR is considered a yep. somatic approach, you know, interestingly. So um, on, on the body side of things, I think there's probably a lot of different things available to you to incorporate into your, your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think trauma focus too. Yeah. yeah. I would just add like there's there's uh, the expressive arts therapies, um, mm -hmm. like conferences and yeah. things. a lot of them are online. And some of them have like those like a certain track, like if you're working, doing grief work and there may be some specific things around doing art therapy um, activities with that. So that's, that's another way, that's just an example. Um, that's another way to get, to be able to incorporate some art that, that is really grounded. Another way to maybe incorporate it more is that um, having some supervision with an art therapist. Hmm. So that you have like that kind of perspective and um, and support and so that it's it's done with some integrity and you know when you're out of bounds or when what what's within your bounds. Too. That's great advice. That's great advice. I like that. And you know when you are seeking your job you can make sure to find places with creative arts therapies mm -hmm. already there so you can collaborate with people. Yeah, I would just really say um, some of the primary therapists, like there's um, five on our team and then only two art therapists and often they'll be like, oh, I'm having this family session. I know they're really interested in art. Like, what do you think would be beneficial for their family? What's going on? And sometimes I'll even go to that session with them, but I also just be like, oh, maybe do this and give advice and let them use the materials. So there is a lot of collaboration. Yep. A lot of collaboration. Which can be really rich. I think the, the tricky part is when like a psychiatrist, for instance, would make art with clients and call it art therapy. That's when it gets tricky. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. But there are some other programs, like you mentioned the online lesson yeah. program. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, there's I know and Pratt has like yeah. a residency yeah, program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there are other options too without diving, changing your whole life, right? And mm -hmm. going in for three yeah. more years. Mm -hmm. There's a good one in Santa Fe too. Oh, oh yes. Mm -hmm. That's our musical. That's yeah. 
what is it? I can't remember the name of it, but my supervisor went there. Mm. So. And is it a university or is it a? Yeah, it's a graduate program. program. Um, I can probably Google it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we are. That is our hour. Gosh. Um, I know it goes so fast. It's fast. Yeah. Thank you so much. For being thank here. you all for listening. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck to everybody. Yeah. So our next art and work panel will be about uh, muralism. So that'll be uh, nice. January 18th. So we'll both be talking to muralists and also um, uh, a woman who has started a mural um, festival and how she went about going back about that. So I know. Can we go? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Back free and open to the public. Yeah, invite all your friends. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. And if anybody wants to talk to us one on one. Oh, great. Yeah. So come on. I'll stay for five minutes. Questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. <laughs>